Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about ST elevations in AVR. Is it a STEMI or not? The case involves a 65-year-old woman with diabetes and a past stenting of her circumflex. She's been short of breath for several days, but now comes in because of new onset nausea and vomiting. Uh, she did not have any chest pain. She was somewhat hypotensive uh, with a blood pressure of 95 over 60. She was 92% on three liters. Uh, she looked pale, uncomfortable, and somewhat tachypnic. She had bibasal arouse, and her extremities uh, were cool. And uh, here is her ECG. Uh, take a close look at it. So what we see are fairly dramatic uh, ST depressions in the inferior leads. Uh, there are no real ST elevations other than in AVR. Uh, there may be a half millimeter in V1 as well. So is this a STEMI? Uh, should the ER activate the STEMI team? Well, uh, in 2019, a study out of the uh, University of Arizona looked at this question. Uh, they looked at 99 patients uh, who presented to their center uh, with ST elevation in AVR. And the majority of the patients had severe CAD, but only a fairly small number, about 10%, actually had the acute thrombotic occlusion uh, that we typically associate with STEMIs. And surprisingly, uh, these thrombotic occlusions were either in the circumflex or RCA, at least in their case series, not in the left main or LAD. So the short answer is that ST elevation in AVR is not a STEMI, and that routine STEMI activation is not warranted. However, uh, they also note that because of the diffuse disease, these patients can get sick. And while emergency cath lab activation is not needed, urgent cath lab activation appears to be important. Indeed, in their study, uh, ST elevations in AVR associated with multi-lead SE depressions, like what our patient has, is associated uh, with a very high uh, in-hospital mortality, 31% uh, in their series. Uh, one special case I should point out are the patients with inferior STEMI who also have ST elevations in AVR. These patients tend to fare very poorly uh, compared to inferior STEMI patients without ST elevations in AVR, uh, with a nearly five-fold higher mortality rate uh, in this 2013 study. That's because if we go back to the Eindhoven's triangle, uh, remember that lead AVR points away uh, from the rest of the heart. So ST elevation and AVR reflect global ischemia, essentially a reciprocal ST elevations of the global ST depressions uh, that reflect left main or multivessel coronary artery disease. So patients with inferior ST elevations plus ST elevation and AVR have both an occluded RCA as well as high grade left main or multivessel CAD. So they can decompensate very quickly. For these patients, move quickly and consider upfront hemodynamic support. In our case, our patient had become more hypotensive and dysmic. She was placed on a non-rebreather and was taken as an urgent case to the cath lab. The STEMI team was not actually not activated. On cath, you see that she has a fairly uh, small but dominant RCA that was diseased at its ostium and proximally. And here's her left main. Um, there is a critical lesion at its ostium. The ECG findings all make sense. So our initial plan was to place a balloon pump and quickly transfer her to a tertiary center for either cabbage or high-risk PCI. But unfortunately, as we we're getting ready to place the balloon pump, uh, she started to have runs of uh, VT, initially just salvos, but then becoming more prolonged and sustained. She eventually required 13 shocks, amiodarone, lidocaine, several rounds of epinephrine. Code blue was called. Uh, she was uh, successfully intubated, but shortly thereafter became even more hypotensive and fell into PEA arrest. She needed three minutes of chest compressions uh, before achieving ROSC. And somehow we managed to place a balloon pump during all the pandemonium. And clearly she was not stable enough for transfer at this point. So we proceeded uh, with emergency uh, salvage PCI. We uh, quickly sent a BMW wire down through the left main and dilated it with a 2.5 millimeter balloon to establish a larger channel. And after POBA, uh, the left main was larger, uh, but was still somewhat hazy in its midsection. The LED was also severely uh, and diffusely diseased. So we stented the left main into the LED with a 3.0 millimeter DES, which we uh, post dilated with a, a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon. 
And here is the uh, final angiographic result after left main stenting. Uh, the left main looked better, uh, but you'll note that there is a CTO in the proximal circumflex as well as diffuse disease in the LAD, especially in the midsection. Her blood pressure had somewhat stabilized, uh, but uh, she was on a balloon pump and on a norepinephrine infusion. Uh, she had no further runs of ventricular tachycardia. So at this point, uh, we were able to transfer her to a tertiary center uh, for further management of her cardiogenic shock. All right, take-home messages. So no, ST elevations in AVR is not considered a STEMI. There is usually no acute thrombotic occlusion, but that does not mean that these patients cannot get sick quickly. As this case showed, there could be significant left main disease or severe diffuse CAD. And remember the special case of patients with inferior STEMI who also have ST elevations in AVR. These are amongst the sickest of the sick. They will often have an RCA occlusion as well as severe left main disease. For these patients, uh, move quickly and consider upfront hemodynamic support. Thank you for watching.